last week we talked about the difference between the meaning of a sentence and the grammar of a sentence. This quiz is only asking you about the grammar. So it says give a grammatically correct but meaningless sentence. And then it gives you a number of options. So where should we start? Which one is easier to fill in? Well, there's one space that's a preposition. And we only have one preposition. So it looks like this should be by. And then we only have one space that is a verb. And well, we have two verbs. Uh, we have two spaces for nouns. And then we have one space, this one, or this one. Well, it looks like we have to decide what kind of sentence we have. It's a question, right? Plus Q. So this is a question. What kind of question is it? If it is a yes or no question, the answer will look very different from if it is like a who, what, when, where, or why question. Well, look at the words we have. Ask, by, did, her, it, t, t, and empty. So it, it looks like it's probably not a complicated question like who, what, when, where, and why, or how. It looks like a yes or no question. So in that case, this blank is empty. Fill in the empty sign. There's no movement here. A yes or no question only moves between T. Right, so we know that this movement happens, so this one should be T. And the question word goes here. Which one is the question word? Did, did is the question word. So it's empty, did. So did is one of the two verbs, right? The other verb is ask. So we put did here, and so this verb must be ask. And then finally, we have two nouns, her and it. Well, let's look at her. Is her a subject or an object? It's an object, right? The subject is she. So this one has to go in this position, the last position. So her goes here. And therefore, this one must be it. And so your complete answer. Is this. Did it ask by her? It's meaningless. This sentence does not mean anything, but the grammar is correct. If you can answer this question, even though the sentence is meaningless, you will have mastered the key skill in learning grammar. It's not about what the sentence says. It's about the structure of the sentence. I hope you can keep this idea in mind during the rest of the semester. When we talk about easier sentences, it will be very similar to Chinese. 
but when the sentences get complicated and translation becomes difficult, then you will need to understand the structure of the sentence in order to help you understand the meaning of the sentence. OK, I'm going to. Uh, show you the answer on Moodle, so if you missed class today and you're watching at home, you can also compare. Although it, by this point you already know the answer, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Today we're going to be talking about. Subordinate conjunctions and adverbial clauses. The hell is this? A conjunction is a word that connects two other words. Usually we think of words like and, but, or, so, for, yet, nor. Those are coordinate conjunctions. What, what they connect on the left and on the right are equal in grammatical meaning. Today we're talking about subordinate. Sub means lower. So on the left and on the right, the grammar is different. Let me give you an example. The regular structure of an English sentence looks like this. John goes, uh, goes is a bad word. Jane drives her car to work. That's also not a good sentence. Uh, by herself every day. Subject, Jane. Verb, drive, mm, drives. Object, her car. Everything else by herself every day. But as I say here, equals, in most cases, you can move the second half of the sentence to the front. And the grammar will be exactly the same. The meaning will be slightly different. If you move the back things to the front, you are emphasizing those things. So in the regular sentence, you're simply saying something that Jane does every day. But if you move by herself every day to the front, you are emphasizing the fact that she is alone when she drives. She doesn't have a carpool partner. She doesn't drive her kids. She doesn't drive her family. She is alone but the grammar is exactly the same. Now, sometimes it's not just a preposition. Sometimes it is adverbial. It describes the rest of the sentence. So keeping with Jane. Again, subject Jane, verb drives, object her car, and this is everything else. But look at this. She leaves home every day. Is this a complete sentence? She, subject, verb, leaves, object, home, everything else every day. So yes, this is a complete sentence. The only thing connecting these two complete sentences is the word after. And this is what we call a subordinate conjunction. It connects both parts. Uh, it connects um, two complete sentences, but it makes this sentence smaller than this sentence. What I mean is, this is a complete sentence, but this is not a complete sentence. 
once you add the word after, the sentence is no longer complete. You can do a substitution test to check for this. After work. These two fit here after this word and both make the overall sentence complete. But because this is not a complete sentence, once uh, it can still fit here, therefore we should not treat this part, including after, as a complete sentence. Uh, let me see if I can. There, right, so if this is not a complete sentence, then this is also not a complete sentence. By comparison, the grammar is the same. Therefore, after she leaves home every day is not a complete sentence. Therefore, this is smaller than this. So it is a subordinate conjunction. It connects these two parts, but not equally. This should not be too hard to understand. Um, but the different kinds of subordinate conjunctions. There are many, many, many different kinds. Basically, every kind of idea that you can put in this position. There exists a subordinate conjunction. So after is time, right? Related to time. So if you have after, you have before, you have between, uh, you have during. You can't use during, sorry. Um, you have after and before. You can't use between either. Um, after, before. Um, you can have reasons. I'm going to I'm going to move this over here just because it's more convenient. Same thing. Because makes what comes after that not a complete sentence. Uh, if you have because you can have related words like since. Um, you can have. Uh, even more complicated stuff like. Due to the fact that. Although I guess this isn't one word anymore, but the idea is similar and we're going to talk about this use of that in week six. The basic idea here is the same. Once you have a subordinate conjunction and follow that with a complete sentence, this complete sentence is no longer complete. And this is why you cannot simply have a sentence starting with because. Because you can put this in front, right? According to this rule, you can move all of these things to the front. So after he leaves home every day, Jane drives her car is a perfectly OK sentence. Because she goes to work, Jane drives her car is also a perfectly good sentence. But if you only write this part, this is not a complete sentence. This is why your writing teacher always says that this is wrong. It is only the first half of this sentence. One more thing I want to point out and then we'll start doing the practice questions. Uh, in this. Formula S V. 
O is optional. Sometimes your verb is intransitive and it does not have an object. But if you move this to the front, you must have a comma. Right? Jane drives her car, no comma, by herself. By herself every day, comma. Jane drives her car. Jane drives her car, no comma, after she leaves home every day. After she leaves home every day, comma, Jane drives her car. And it is this comma that tells me whether you know what you're doing or you're guessing. Because the comma must be placed exactly before the main sentence begins. This is all part of the adverbial clause. This is not the main sentence. The main sentence begins after the comma. So uh, sometimes you will hear people say, oh, using commas in English is so complicated. It feels like I can put them wherever I want. Not true. Every comma has a good grammatical reason. And this is one of those reasons. Now, all of this, especially the comma, applies to American English. This part applies only to American English. British people don't care about the comma. Sometimes they will take out the comma. Sometimes they will put in another comma somewhere else. Um, so thank God I'm teaching American English because British English, I would have no idea what to say here. So in this class, if you uh, previously learned British English, uh, in this class, we're going to learn American English. OK, that's the theoretical introduction. Do you have questions? OK, so let's take a look at the handout, page one. If you don't have a handout, I have many, 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 many more copies. Please come and take one. OK, let's take a look at the first set of questions. It says to add punctuation and capitalization as necessary. Do not add or delete any words so you can change everything except for the actual words. So for example, uh, let's take a look at question one together. As soon as the rain began, the children wanted to go outdoors. They loved to play outside in the warm summer rain. I used to do the same thing when I was a child. Obviously, you will need to add some commas and some periods. The question is where? Uh, I'll, let's do the first one together, and I'll give you some time to do questions two through six. So as soon as this is a subordinate conjunction. The rain began is a complete sentence, but because it follows this subordinate conjunction, this whole thing is not the main sentence. The main sentence begins with the subject, the children. Subject wanted to go is the verb. Uh, and go does not have an object. Outdoors is an adverb. It's the everything else part. Then you have a new noun, they. So it looks like this begins a new sentence. Verb, love, to play outside in the warm summer rain. Uh, in is a preposition, so you know that it's still part of the same sentence. But then after rain, 
you have a new noun, I, and I must be a subject. So this is probably a new sentence. I used to do the same thing, when. When is also a subordinate conjunction. So I was a child is a complete sentence, but when I was a child is not a complete sentence. Therefore, this question one, the answer should be as soon as the rain began, comma. The children wanted to go outdoors. Period. Capital T. They love to play outside in the warm summer rain. Period. OK, I'll give you three minutes to do questions two through six, and then we'll compare answers. Okay, let's compare answers. Number two, 
I had a cup of tea before I left for work this morning. Comma, but I, I will only explain this much later in the semester. It's not actually part of this unit. But I didn't have anything to eat, period. I rarely eat breakfast. So there's no comma here because the before introduces everything else and everything else goes at the back of the sentence. So this is normal. You did not move anything. You don't need a comma here. Number three, when Jack and his wife go on vacation, comma, they have to drive or take the train because his wife is afraid of flying. Number four, after Ellen gets home from work, comma, she likes to read the newspaper, period. The sentence ends here. Capital S. She follows the same routine every day after work as soon as she gets home, period. Uh, again, don't be fooled by this question. Subject is she, verb is follows, object is the same routine, and all of this stuff is everything else. Every day is the time, after work is also the time, as soon as she gets home is time and place, period, capital S. She changes her clothes, comma, gets a snack and a drink, comma, and sits down in her favorite chair to read the newspaper in peace and quiet, period. You need commas here because she's making a list. She does three things. The first thing is she changes her clothes. This is the first thing. The second thing is she gets a snack and a drink. This is one thing. Right, gets a snack and a drink is one thing. And the third thing is sits down in her favorite chair to read the newspaper in peace and quiet. This is the third thing. So it's a list. A, comma, B, comma, and C. A, comma, B, comma, and C. Therefore, you need commas. Some people will say you don't need a comma before the and. This sentence tells you exactly why you need a comma here, because there are uses of and without a comma. If you don't have a comma here, does a drink fit with the previous item or with the next item? The comma can organize the sentence for you. Capital S, she usually has about half an hour to read the paper before her husband arrives home. Five, when you speak to someone who is hard of hearing, comma, hard of hearing just means they can't hear very well. You do not have to shout, period. Capital I. It is important to face the person directly and speak clearly, period. Capital M. My elderly father is hard of hearing, comma, but he can understand me when I look directly at him and say each word clearly. OK, I'll explain this comma and. Uh, the previous one, where is it? Here, this comma. Why do you need a comma here? Uh, we're talking about subordinate conjunctions, but if you use coordinate conjunctions, the thing in front is grammatically equal to the thing in back, then you need a comma before the conjunction. But is a coordinate conjunction. This is a complete sentence. This is also. This is also a complete sentence. The word but connects two complete sentences. It is equal on the left and on the right. Therefore, it is a coordinating conjunction. 
and you must put a comma before the coordinating conjunction. We're going to talk about coordinating conjunctions in week uh which week is this like 13 a long time in the future but uh just to let you know for now so the same thing in question five starting here my elderly father is hard of hearing this is a complete sentence he can understand me when i look directly at him sage where clearly this is also a complete sentence two complete sentences connected by but this means that but is a coordinating conjunction. Therefore, you need to put a comma. In front. Um, English. Punctuation. Has one big difference from Chinese punctuation. Chinese punctuation is its own character. It takes up space just like another word, but English pronunciation is a letter. It is not a word, it is a letter, right? You add the period to the end of the word. You add the comma to the end of the word. So you would never put a comma in front, like here. You would always put it at the end of the previous word here. So if you begin a new line with a comma, that is always wrong. And number six. Jane wears contact lenses because she is nearsighted, period. Capital W. Without them, this comma is correct. She can't see from one end of a basketball court to the other, period. Capital W. When one of her contacts popped out during a recent game, comma. Both teams stopped playing and searched the floor for the lens. So this question actually gives you some hints. This comma tells you that the sentence ends here. It's possible that the sentence could have said she is nearsighted without them. But then this would be a period, but the question gives you the comma so you know that the sentence ends here and that without them is the everything else part of the next sentence. And that this has been moved from the back of the sentence to the front of the sentence, and that's why there is a comma here. Um, Another design of this question is. At first it's present tense, right? She is, she can't, but then it goes to the past tense. This tells us that. The sentence ends here. Because when is now talking about another time. Without this uh, tense change, it could have been possible for the sentence to go, she can't see from one end of a basketball court to the other when one of her contacts pops out. If this is present tense, then this would be a complete sentence, but it's not, it's past tense. So the question is helping us make sense of what is going on. Okay, do you have questions about these uh, six? All right, let's look at the next six. The first one is an example. Here's what you do. It gives you a word and you have to put the word in the correct location. Then you correct the punctuation and capitalization, just like the previous one. So the first one, the word is while the sentence is Anya listened to some music. She was working at her computer. You have to be able to see that while goes here. And then fix any other problems. Five questions. Uh, this should be slightly easier. I'll give you two minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number two, where does the before go? Where should you put it? At the very front. Before I go to bed, I always brush my teeth. Is there something else we should fix? Before begins the sentence, therefore it is not a complete sentence. Before I go to bed, I, I as a subject, therefore you must plus put a comma here. Number three, ever since, where do we put ever since? Again, at the very front. Ever since I was a child, I've been interested in butterflies. Again, I is the subject, um, so a comma goes here. Ever since I was a child, comma, I've been interested in butterflies. Number four, after. Where do we put the after? In the middle, here. So this sentence goes, I'm going to meet some friends after I leave class today. Is there anything else we need to change? No, this order is correct. No need to add a comma. Next one, when, where do we put the when? At the front, when people speak English too fast, comma, Oscar can't catch the meaning. And so the people has to be changed to a lowercase p. And number six, the next time, where do we put the next time? Again, the very front, the next time lowercase t, the teacher speaks too fast, comma, Oscar is going to ask her to slow down. Questions? Some of you might be thinking, these are so easy. Why are we doing these? Well, in the exam, this will only be possibly one kind of problem you will have to notice and fix. So it's always good to do more practice to make sure you can see that there is a problem, even if it's not a, a an exercise question. When it's part of an article, you should notice that this is a problem. Some of you might be thinking, why are we wasting class time doing practice questions? Well, you could take the handout and uh, do the questions at home, and we could compare answers in class. You can, but will you? That's why we're doing them in class. OK, let's take a short break. When we come back, we will have a slightly harder uh, exercise question to do. Oh, I decided what to do for the midterm exam. So last week I was talking about uh, what kind of design uh, we could try for the midterm exam. I decided to do the same thing as last semester's final exam. Ten lines, one mistake per line. Um, but it will only be for the first six weeks of this semester's class. Okay, let's take a break. No, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it.
。哦，好，所以我们每一周的功课就是课堂上没做完的题目。这个单元的题目到第四页。所以我就看今天上到哪。对。剩下的就是下个礼拜上课。对，你也可以就是自己回去写，然后看一篇对答案。好，就在模稿上。对。
If you have a question, you should always ask. During the break, one student pointed something out. On question four, as soon as I said the answer is she follows the same routine every day after work as soon as she gets home, period. But another possible answer is after work, period. Capital A, as soon as she gets home, comma. This one actually makes a little more sense. In terms of the meaning, at the as soon as part can fit with the previous sentence or with the next sentence. Um, but it's more common to see it at the beginning of a new sentence. So thank you to this a classmate of yours for pointing this out. If you have a question, you should ask. All right, page two. The following essay, there are 10 mistakes related to our unit today. Some mistakes are about the use of comma, but some mistakes are using the wrong so subordinate conjunction. Uh, 10 mistakes, the first one is an example. So let's look at this example. People are criticizing school athletics these days. Athletics just means sports. When I say it means sports, you now understand what it means, but you should also learn the word athletics. Supposedly, there's too much emphasis on sports. And the original sentence says if there's not enough emphasis on education, but the logic means while, which means at the same time as. There's not enough emphasis on education. Right, it's comparing two different things. So you should see that this is the wrong conjunction and you should replace it with the right conjunction. So the rest of this essay, there are nine more mistakes possibly related to the word choice. I will give you seven minutes because it's harder. You have to find the mistake and you have to fix it. Seven minutes.
Let's compare answers. Um, let's have a little fun. Wang Yixuan, can you give us one mistake? Which line, Di Ji Hang? Did you find one? Not sure. Okay. Uh, Zhang Yixi. Zhang Yixi. Cynthia. She has left. Bum bum bum. Ling Yuzhen. Um, Bibiana. Also not here. Hmm. Peng Long Yi. Peng Long Yi. Wow, I really know how to call your names. Li Yi Jie. Hi, can you give us one mistake? Not sure? Okay, I'll call somebody older. Maybe they'll know. Uh, Ling Rong. Hi, can you give us one mistake? Paragraph three. Uh, you, you mean this comma? Okay, second, change it to secondly. Okay. Um, Actually, both of them are fine. I know most of you like to say firstly, secondly, but actually both of them are fine. As long as you use the same set, be consistent. Don't mix them, uh, but this one's okay. Can you give us another mistake? Uh, okay, where is this? Are you talking about this one? Right, so wherever their team wins, they learn how to be good winners. Correct, this is not about the place. This is about the time, whenever their team wins. Good. Uh, Ye Liang Yi. Hi, can you give us another mistake? Okay, don't worry about it. Um, let's try one more person. Uh, Yao Ziqing, can you give us a mistake? Okay, paragraph three. If students play on a team, they learn to get along and work with others. You think if is wrong, it should be changed to when? I agree, this should be when students play on a team. If you only look at this one sentence, if and when could both work. But in this paragraph, the idea is that sports do teach people things. So there's no question of, are you playing sports or not? It's saying in this situation where people are playing sports, they will learn things. So it's not if, it is when. Okay, let's look at the other mistakes. Paragraph two, line one, sports are positive, although they get students involved in something. It should not be although, it should be because. If you look at the rest of this paragraph, the meaning is clear. We constantly hear that violence is increasing. But I think a lot of people get involved in crime when they don't have enough to do. Uh, in English, there's a saying, the devil makes work of idle hands. If your hands are not busy doing something, they will do something bad. So this is the idea. Because they get students involved in doing something, therefore sports are positive. 
The next one is here. It's hard to commit a violent act even if you want to. So in Chinese, we often say even something something, but that's not correct English. In English, even can only be emphasis, 加强, 甚至. If you want to say uh, the, the meaning that we often give to it in Chinese, you must say even if or even though. Let me explain this very quickly. The thing about these two is they are translated into Chinese in exactly the same way. Sorry. But the meaning in English is different. The difference is in the second word. One of these has already happened. One of these has not yet happened. Even if has not happened, even though has already happened. And so this is the same as although. Here, it's hard to commit a violent act even you want to. So it's saying that you don't want to, but even if you did want to, it would be hard. Even if and even though, both of these are subordinate conjunctions. Right, you want to is a complete sentence. But after, even if, it is no longer a complete sentence. The next one here. You need to put a comma here. When their team loses, comma, they find out that they have to struggle to improve. This is the same as for the previous sets of questions, right? When is a subordinate conjunction. Their team loses is a complete sentence, but when their team loses is not a complete sentence. Then you have a noun. This is a subject, right? They is always a subject. Them is the object, but this is they. So it begins a new sentence. Therefore, the separation is here and you need to put a comma to mark the separation. The next one is here. Students improve their physical condition unless they participate in sports. The meaning is the opposite. It should be uh, either because or when. Both of these are fine. Students improve their physical condition when they participate in sports or because they participate in sports. Next one. Sports are positive, though they allow students who don't have enough money for college to earn sports scholarships and improve their chances for a successful life. This one is wrong. It's not though, right? The both of these are the are good things. They are positive and they give scholarships. Zhang Jing. So this one should be because. Sports are positive because they blah, blah, blah. Next one, unless a young soccer player from a small village in Africa can get a scholarship, he will have a chance to get an education and probably make his life better. Same thing, the meaning is opposite. Uh, this one should be when. When this young African soccer player gets a scholarship, he will have a chance to improve his life. By the way, every time we talk about, uh, we have an example of poor people. Why is it always from Africa? It's kind of racist, right? You don't need to say Africa. You can just say a poor person. Next one, because school sports programs have some problems that need to be fixed, their benefits outweigh their disadvantages. So the because is wrong, right? 
this should be although, even though, or you can simply say though. So there are some problems, but the good is more than the bad, right? So it's going in different directions. Okay, is that nine? That should be nine, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Questions? Do you have questions about this set? So this is slight more like what you will be facing in the midterm exam, but it will not be this hard. I will tell you um, that there is only one mistake per line. Next page. OK, so in this dialogue, there are five mistakes. Some of them have to do with punctuation. Some of them have to do with the choice of subordinate conjunction. I will give you the first one. This one is wrong. As soon as mom gets here, present tense, gets, we can leave for the game. Uh, the reason this is wrong is because as soon as already tells you this is going to happen in the future. So you don't need to say it twice. And the regular tense here is present tense. So if you don't need to add the future, you can simply use present tense. OK, four more mistakes. I will give you three minutes. I'll give you a hint. Each person makes one mistake every time they talk.
Okay, let's call on some volunteers. Meng Tingxuan, are you here? Uh, Chloe? No? Hmm. Luo Jiankai? Hi, so uh, in the first one, can you find a mistake? If there is no if line, uh, the, the first uh, line said by B. So this one, you mean mom is coming this one. Can you find the mistake? Ah, oh, OK, yes, even if we give her a long explanation. Correct. Sorry, I didn't understand you. Good. Um, so they have not yet tried to give her a long explanation. It has not yet happened, so it should be even if. Good. Next one. Qin Jie. Hi. Did you find the mistake in uh, the next one? Unless. Good, correct. Uh, the mistake is here. It's not unless. Right, look at the logic. We explain it slowly and carefully. She will get the basic idea. So you're right. This should be if. If we explain it slowly and carefully, she'll get the basic idea. And the last one, the mistake is here. This should be, will she? You need to change the order. If a sentence begins with only, or never, or seldom, which means not often, or hardly, which means not often, any kind of like low frequency negative word, then the verb needs to be reversed. Will she, did she, has she? Um, this is the only case where if you move something from the back of the sentence to the front of the sentence, you don't add a comma, you change the order of the verb. And then the last line, let's find another volunteer. Hu Jinghe. The last one, did you find a mistake? Not sure. Still asking for help. That's OK, we can find somebody else. Uh, Huang Shuhui. Are you here? Annie. No. Huang Ju. Are you here? This is amazing. I see so many people in front of me. Why am I calling people who are not here? Chen Wei Xuan. Chen Wei Xuan. Are you pretending not to be here? Very interesting. Yang Ziliang. Okay. Did you find a mistake in the last line? OK, where should we add the but? Even though she might not understand everything, but she'll enjoy being with us. Uh, no, sorry. In English, you can choose only one. Even though, or 
Tzfat. The reason is because even though it is a subordinate conjunction and but is a coordinate conjunction, even though it's so you can only choose one. Actually, the mistake is here. You just fixed it the wrong way. This is missing a comma. Even though she might not understand everything, comma, she'll enjoy being with us. For the same reason, this, uh, she might not understand everything is a complete sentence because the next word is a subject, she, right? So this is the end of the complete sentence, but when you add even though, it becomes incomplete. It becomes something that you add to the end of the sentence. But it's not at the end. It is now at the beginning. So you need to add a comma to show us that this has moved from the back to the front. OK, questions about uh, this dialogue? If you have questions, please ask. All right, uh, next we have 10 questions. Again, do not do anything to the words. You can do things to periods, commas, and capital or lowercase letters, but the words must be the same. 10 questions, it's not too hard, five minutes? No, 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 four minutes.
Great, let's begin. Chen Yupei. Are you here? No? Chen Zihan. Hi. Question one. Where's the mistake? It's a trick. There is no mistake. Question two. Cao Zhen? Cao Zhen Zai Ma? Chen Yisa? Hi. Question two. Where's the mistake? Uh, let me help you. Where does the main sentence begin? It begins here, right? Subject, verb, Tom went fishing. So everything before this is an adverbial clause under because, because the lake was calm. So you need a comma here. Because the lake was calm, comma, Tom went fishing. Because the main sentence begins after the comma. OK, great. Question three. Uh, why don't we do it this way? Give me a number between one and ten. Somebody shout a number. Five, give me another number between one and six. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's only one person, so it's you. Yes. Question three, where's the mistake? Okay. Where would you add the semicolon? Here. Tom went fishing because the lake was calm. He caught two fish. OK, uh, I think that's not quite right. I would put it here. Think about this. Because the lake was calm. Therefore, Tom went fishing. Or therefore, he caught two fish. Actually, I don't know. I don't know enough about fishing. Um, anyone know how to fish? You know what? I think you might be right. He went fishing because the lake was calm. It's not dangerous, right? It's not windy. His, his boat is not going to flip over. Uh, so Tom went fishing because the lake was calm. Um, the question says to add periods or commas. So here we can add a period. Lake was calm, period, and then capital H, he caught two fish. OK. All right, next one, question four. Uh, what did you guys say? Five and two? One, two, three, four, five, one. Oh, we already asked you. The person behind you. In the white T-shirt, yes, hi, you. Yep. Uh, question. Five. Should we fix this? How should we fix this? Comma, where? Sorry, I didn't hear you, where? Behind fishing, so Tom went fishing, comma, he caught two fish. 
Well, your instincts are half right. There, there is something missing here. Um, but it, a comma is not strong enough. Let me show you why. The lake was calm is a complete sentence. Tom went fishing is a complete sentence, and they are connected by so. So in fact, this is a coordinate conjunction. The lake was calm, comma, so Tom went fishing, period, capital H, he caught two fish. Uh, between two complete sentences, you cannot use one comma only. It's not strong enough. OK, good. Number six, because the lake was calm and quiet, comma, Tom went fishing. Number seven, the lake was calm, comma, quiet, comma, and clear when Tom went fishing. This is a list, A, B, and C. A, comma, B, comma, and C. Number eight, because Mr. Hood has dedicated his life to helping the poor, comma, he is admired in his community. Number nine, Mr. Hood is admired because he has dedicated his life to helping the poor, period. Capital H. He is well known for his work on behalf of homeless people. You'll notice that this, sorry, this is the same thing as this. This is a complete sentence, but because it comes after because it is incomplete. Here, there is no because, so this is a complete sentence. He is well known by this is also a complete sentence. You cannot simply put a comma between two complete sentences, so the the question only gives us another option, which is period. Number 10. Microscopes, automobile dashboards and cameras. OK, OK, so this is again a list. Three things. Microscopes, comma. Automobile dashboards. This is when you're driving a car. Automobile means car. Um, the, when you're driving a car, the place in front where you can put things, that is a dashboard. Tochenban, I think. And cameras. So this is A, comma, B, comma, and C. Are awkward for left-handed people to use. Period. Capital T. They are designed for right handed people. Period. Capital W. When lefties use these items, comma, they have to use their right hand to do the things that they would normally do with their left hand. OK, do you have questions about these 10? All right, homework is to do the next page, just one page. But I want to give you a few answers first because these are not part of our unit. Then, so this question is, uh, all of the mistakes are related to commas. Some are extra, some are missing. Let me give you a few missing commas. Well, comma, Ms. Ehrlich, comma. And these two commas are because when you are talking to somebody and you use their name, it is not part of the sentence. You are adding it to the sentence. So we use the two commas. 
to tell the reader that this is extra. For the same reason, there's also a comma here. Also, comma, Ms. Ehrlich. Uh, right, and then one more comma that you probably won't catch is here. Most experienced, comma, most skilled. This is called an a positive comma, Tong Wei Yu. The idea is that be, um, between, sorry, on the left and on the right of the comma, the two words mean the same thing. So most experienced means the same thing as most skilled. So there should be a comma in between. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is an extra comma. We'll talk about that next week. OK, so uh, do the rest of this page. We'll compare answers next week and then we will do the next. I will introduce the next unit.